Good evening. Welcome to Politica Podcast. Tonight we have Representative Mike Peterson from Cache Valley. How are you, Mike? I'm doing well, John. So, Thanks for having me. So, uh, 269. HB 269. Yep. You, you got a little, uh, you know, you got a little flack in committee. Uh, got a little flack everywhere. But, so let's talk about it. Why don't you explain to people what, what that bill was all about? Yeah, it, it's very simple. HB 269, simply, it, it, in current code right now, history and American government teachers have a list of documents that, that in code we say you ought to teach from. Uh, you know, the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Pledge of Allegiance. There's 10 or 12 that are listed there. And I just simply said, let's add the Ten Commandments and the Magna Carta to that list. That's it. That, that's the whole bill. That's it. No, no. Well, you know what? We actually have a definition of the Ten Commandments. So you know what we're what we're what we're talking about, um, and that that's that's it. Yeah, you, you know some of the some of the stuff people throw at you. They say, "Well, what about the First Amendment?" Right? What do, What do you say to them when they say that? What about yeah. First Amendment? You know, Jefferson there said there was a separation of church and state. Yeah, I, I love when people ask me that. So I'm sure you already know, but most people have asked me, when they ask me that, they, they kind of expect that it's in the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. And of course, it's in neither one of those founding documents. It's in none of the founding documents, in fact. Thomas Jefferson wrote that statement in a letter to the Danbury Baptist Association of Danbury, Connecticut. Now, at the time, uh, nine of our states had a state religion. And, the, and, and, and in uh, Connecticut, their state religion was Congregationalism. Well, these are the Baptists. So they're a little, feeling a little unsure of what their stature is like uh, being Baptist versus Congregationalists. And they, they, they look at that First Amendment that says Congress shall uh, you know, uh, not establish a religion. Right. And they're thinking, what if that ever got pulled back? What happens to us? So Thomas Jefferson writes them a letter and, and assures them that that there is a wall of separation. What he was saying was that the government will never, will never pro prohibit or prevent you from practicing your religion. And you know, John, for the first hundreds of years in this country, whenever that phrase was used, or whenever this idea of, of, of uh, establishment of religion was used in courts, they would, they would insert his entire letter. Because if you see it in context, that, that phrase, separation of church and state, if you see it in context of the letter, you know exactly what he meant. But if you pull out just those words, as they did in 1960, uh, maybe three, I can't remember exactly which year, if you pull that phrase out, you don't, and they're not in context, there's a separation, uh, there's a wall of separation. And from that time forward, courts started to say there is a wall of separation, meaning Government can have nothing to do with religion, and it simply wasn't what, what, what Thomas Jefferson intended, certainly not what the founders intended. In fact, one of the interesting things, so he wrote that on, on January 1st, a Friday of 1802. Can you guess where he was on Sunday? Church? Church. <laughs> where did he attend church? At the House of Representatives. At the Capitol. And that's where he attended church regularly. There's, there's a lot of journal um, entries of different people talking about uh, m seeing uh, Thomas Jefferson, meeting Thomas Jefferson there, that he had a pew. I mean, it, it, it's, it's crazy to think that here's the man who had a separation of church and state, but attended church. In fact, I brought with me the Jefferson Bible. You ever heard of the Jefferson Bible? Yeah. So he actually wrote two or edited two two versions of the Jefferson Bible. One was because um, there's there's a new show on on uh, uh, Amazon Prime uh, where they, Jefferson actually got exactly multiple copies of the That's Bible right. and he he cut. That's right. He cut phrases out of it and then put them together. That's right. So he made two of them. The first was so that the missionaries would have a a, a more simplified version as they went out proselyting to the Indians. Okay, they, a, a, a book that's 1,610 pages, they didn't think, Thomas Jefferson was told and he believed, wouldn't be a real great selling point to go out and meet with folks to try to convince them of the, of the truthfulness of the Bible with 1,610 pages. So he, just like you, just like you said, he cut, but, but, the, but the real Bible that people, when they, when they refer to the Jefferson Bible, he actually called it, the, uh, I want to make sure I say it right, the life and morals of Jesus of Nazareth. 
Thomas Jefferson was really a great philosopher. You know, he, he read every ph philosopher he could find. The Savior, Jesus Christ, was his favorite philosopher. So, and so he wrote another, he wrote another uh, uh, Jefferson Bible, which, again, cut out things. But what he cut out was, was just the, the teachings of, of Jesus. He wasn't, a, he wasn't a fan of what Paul said or what Luke said. He just wanted pure and undefiled. What did Jesus say? Because he, he said if people would follow what Jesus said, the country would, would remain a moral, and, uh, a moral uh, country that would, you know, that would remain. In fact, it's interesting, from 1904 to 19, sometime in the 1950s, the Jefferson Bible, any time a, a new member of Congress, the federal level, was sworn in, they were always given a, a copy of the Jefferson Bible. Interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting tidbit from history there. So, so what happened as you were running this bill mm -hmm. uh, through the House and the Senate? Uh, what what were the objections people had? Primarily, they were around around is it constitutional? And uh, in 1971, the Supreme Court came out with the lemon uh, the lemon uh, test. Uh -huh. Probably you've, you're probably right. familiar with that, and they used that test to. To discern, determine if anything was was constitutional or not, and at that point on, they started saying everything was unconstitutional. Um, but most folks aren't aware that that a couple of years ago, the the Kennedy versus Bremerton case, uh, Coach Kennedy up in Bremerton, Washington, he oh, was yeah. praying, and um, when when the when the when the Supreme Court ruled on that, the they, football coach, right? That's right, football coach, and he would pray. And and his team his team would come and they wanted to pray with him. He wasn't he didn't uh, invite them or encourage them, but they came and they wanted to be a part of it. Well, at the in the end, the Supreme Court uh, what they did was they threw out the lemon test, said that thing was completely misguided, and they in place put in a they call it a history and tradition test that if if something has a, a history or tradition in our country, then it can, then it can be constitutional. So people kept saying, well, that's unconstitutional. I mean, even our own Speaker of the House thought it was. Uh, he told me at one point, he, he thanked me, he said, Mike, you're, you're teaching us that this is not unconstitutional. And he was, he was appreciative of, of the education we've been getting because people thought it was unconstitutional. People thought, like I said before, the separation of church and state, that it was not, you couldn't do it. People have said, well, if we do this, then we're going to have to do the seven tenets of, of, of the satanic temple, or we're going to have to post the Quran. And again, well, we don't have a history or tradition of posting either of those. We do have a tradition of, of showing the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey Siri, how do I get to the state capitol? John, the fastest way to get to the capitol is to make a lot of empty promises, to get help from special interest groups and endorsements from politicians. You will also need to buy a better suit. That's not going to work for me, Siri. You need to find another way. John, listen to me. If you're going to win your race, you will need to play the political game. You also need to use more hairspray and buy a golden retriever. Also, a new phone case would be nice. That's enough of this. John, 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 are you there? Did you just leave me on the road? Fine. Keep your principles, John. My name's John Johnson. I'm not running to be part of a system, and I don't owe anyone special favors. I'm running to listen to and work for you. I'm running to get results. Welcome back to Politicket. We've got Mike Peterson here. We've been talking about the Magna Carta and the Ten Commandments. And so we, we, we had just been discussing uh, feedback that you got in, yeah. in uh, running this bill and comments that you had. Yeah. Uh, why don't you share a few more of those? So, so uh, in fact, I got, a, I got a, a Facebook message just last week from somebody. Uh, because people people find little quotes that the that a founder has said that makes them think that the that the early founder that you're were completely not, wrong. Yeah, that I'm completely wrong. That that the Ten Commandments had nothing to do with the with our uh, founding of our nation. That there was no Christian values or principles or anything like that. So, for example, um, I want to show you real quick. I I, I picked up a this is from uh, Wall Builders. 
that are out in Texas, David Barton, if you know that group. This is a, a primer that, that they uh, did a, uh, a reprint of. This is from the 16, 1690s. This was a, a book they used in schools. That's that... right. This, this is the first grade primer, and it's, and it's filled with uh, things like, uh, I'll go to a, the preface of the Ten Commandments. This is a question for, for kids. What, uh, what doth the preface of the Ten Commandments teach us? And then it gives us the gives us the answer that the little first grader is supposed to know, uh, which is the first commandment. And there's the answer. It's the uh, the fifth commandment is Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And then the question: What is required in the fifth, in the first commandment? I mean, it's just page after page after page. It's about I don't know a third of it is about about the Ten Commandments. I just think it's interesting that that from the beginning of our of our founding, the Ten Commandments has certainly played a part in. In, in school, in how kids learn to read. I mean, the, the, the first text that they had in America was the Bible, and then they, and then they got the, this primer in, in the 1600s. But uh, there's no question that the Ten Commandments are apart. Um, I, I have, I've had a lot of people say, but you know, Thomas Jefferson carried a Koran with him. That's proof that he was, you know, he was into the Muslim faith. Well, <clears throat> so in the in the late 1600s, excuse me, in the late 1700s, we were having a trouble trouble over there, uh, the shores of Tripoli. You remember over near Africa, um, the the Muslim pirates were were taking they, they were taking uh, ships from about five different European countries and and the Americas, taking the ships, uh, burning them, taking the everything they could they could steal, and taking the the men as slaves. Well, t uh, Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, and John Adams were sent by the United States to go over and, and try to work something out. Well, to understand who these Muslim people were, Thomas Jefferson did read a Koran. He studied that Koran. He wanted to know who am I dealing with? What are what are their values? Why do they, why are they so willing to give up their lives for things? And so again, he studied the Koran. That's why he carried a Koran. It wasn't because he was, he was Muslim or he was uh, joining that faith. It was because he wanted to know who they are. With that, I've had a lot of people say, well, you know that in the, in the Treaty of Tripoli, it says that, that the United States is not a Christian nation. Well, what, he, what, what the, what the uh, act really is about, or the treaty really was trying to say, is that these other countries are, are Christian nations. I mean, Great Britain, as you know, the King of England was the head of the church. Right. And that was true of many of those, of those countries, that the king was the head of the church. Well, the United States isn't like that. Or, um, so so there's, it's a little nuanced. But we are not a Christian nation, as in we are run by a Christian denomination. But certainly, the foundation of this country are Christian values, Christian principles. And, and so when people, so in, in that treaty, when we said that we are not a Christian nation, that's what it's referring to. Not that we don't believe in Christian values or Christian principles. Well, you know, you think about the, the the whole promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? These are these are rights that are endowed by certain unalienable rights, That's right? right? And and they're endowed by our Creator, right? And and the purpose of the government is actually to defend those rights. And and what's happened through the court systems is that, uh, you know, we do we we do have, you know, law that is based on other laws, right? It's it's based on a legal tradition. And, right. uh, you know, I guess there's a feeling that we should, you know, move away from these natural laws. But putting the Bible back in was really an attempt to, to, go, to go back to the idea of natural law, right? And at least have kids that are familiar with those ideals. We owe it to them to at least be familiar with it. And if nothing else, I, I think it's important that they know who were these who were these pilgrims and who was George Washington and John Adams and, and Benjamin Rush? What what made them tick and why did they think what they thought? Why did why did Thomas Jefferson write a declaration of, of independence the way he did? And those the, the Bible and, and the Ten Commandments certainly influenced that. And, and we owe it to these kids to let them know where that came from. It's not it wasn't just they didn't just dream it up themselves. So so where do you where do you think this is going going now? Because one, within your within the law that was passed. It doesn't say they have to use these things, yeah. does it? It just simply gives them the right. That's right. And and to be completely honest, John, I think they had the right before. Um, 
in, in fact, in fact, in statute, even before this, there's a line in the statute that says that no, uh, we don't practice any censorship or banning of documents simply because they are re religious by nature. So I think that, that re in reality, we could, have, we could have done this before, but I wanted to just clarify. I wanted to have it in, in statute so people knew you actually could. In fact, um, I, was, I, was, I was talking with someone today who, who, was, who teaches at a high school, and one of the high school teachers had no idea that it was possible and, has, and said, I'm going to do that. Because, but, but again, I think most people are, have been so, so nervous, so uh, they, we've been taught for 50 years that this is all off, you know, off the table. You can't do anything religious of nature, uh, nature in your classroom, and it's just simply not true. Interesting. So, so where do you go now? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you, you might remember uh, Jeff Stenquist had a bill that, that was about um, making sure that in classrooms there's no no flags, no, no religious symbols, no speaking. It, to me, it was sort of a, uh, the pendulum swung all the way over here to, the, to this side, wiped out the, the possibility of anything. Well, his bill didn't pass. Right. And so it, that, that's what I found incredible, is that his bill failed, right? And then the, then the Salt Lake Tribune concludes that it must be okay to to fly pride flags and uh, other things within the classroom, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, where they get that, I, I, I don't know. So I don't know. So you ask, where, where do we go from here? I, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm thinking about for next year how we could, um, you know, I think it'll be good in, over the course of the year for people to find out that, that, that this, this, this it didn't bring on the end of the world to have the Ten Commandments. And I and I'm looking. I want to look and see if there's some other things we could do for Utah. Students. So so why was the Magna Carta put in there? Um, well, two 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 reasons. One, Brady Brammer suggested when I talked when I mentioned him. I I think we could just add the Ten Commandments. He said, Why don't we add the Magna Carta? I said, Great idea. Magna Carta certainly has a uh, had an influence in where we're at. I mean, you can you 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 know you track you track Ten Commandments and and. Um, the Roman law and, and Magna Carta, it just, it just follows a line to get to Blackstone and, and common law and, and English law, and here we are. So it just, it just seemed to make sense that it would, that could be, certainly be a part of what kids learn about. Well, we're about out of time, so uh, what's your concluding remarks that you have maybe on this uh, bill that you passed? So, I know you were just on a podcast, right, for yeah. uh, the wall builders. I, I, I think that my concluding remarks would be uh, my gratitude for people and especially for God who I think helped soften people's hearts and recognize that, that there is value in having, you know, back to, back to, back to Stenquist's bill. To me, it was, he, kept, he told me it was about neutral, being neutral. John, if I had you come to my house and I said, drive in neutral, you would never arrive. We can't be neutral. There has to be some sort of value. We want our kids to go someplace. And, and so being able to, um, just being able to discuss it, know about it, not to preach it, but, but let, let, at least let kids know it's there will be a good thing. And, and I'm just grateful that, that, that the legislature agreed and saw, that the, saw the value in that. And uh, leadership certainly got behind it, and, and that happened. So I'm, I'm really grateful. That's that's what I'd want to end with. Very good. Thank you. We'll see you guys next week.